In this video, we're going to add three new obstacles to the screen and also have them loop across the screen. So when they get up to the top, we're gonna to loop back up from the bottom. This is gonna be the first step to actually building out our levels. So we're going to start by creating a obstacle class and then that obstacle class is actually going to be extended for each of our three different types of obstacles. What that's gonna allow us to do is treat each obstacle kind of as the same thing for certain areas, but then have customized uh, ability within each obstacle type. So let's start within our sprites folder and add a new file called obstacle. And this is going to be a very similar sprite component to our player or our bin really. So I'm going to actually just create the obstacle first and then we'll kind of walk through it a little bit. So here's our simple obstacle class and you can see it is just a sprite component which has a game reference and you notice this time it has a sprite path which it takes as a argument. So this is going to allow us to create multiple different obstacles with different sprite paths, although the other parameters are going to be the same. And notice this time we're using a circle hitbox instead of the rectangular one, but ultimately it's the same thing. And one thing to note is we did add an obstacle size here, which is just a 216 size in our constants there. But this is all basically the same. We're never actually going to directly add the obstacle to the world. Instead, we're going to create a subclass of the obstacle for each of our actual obstacle types and then add those to the world. We can create our first one, which is going to be a trash obstacle, which we will call obstacle trash. And this will, of course, extend the obstacle. And then within here, we will have to pass it the sprite path, which is going to just be called the trash, which is going to be an image that we do need to add to our project here. So let me add all these images now. And it's also going to be in that assets images. And these are going to be the three obstacles we're gonna be adding. So we can go ahead and add those in there. This is pretty much all we need for the simplest version of this. So if we create the three different versions of this, we'll have the trash, the water, and the fire. So now we have our three different types of obstacles and they all should be displayed differently. And if we go ahead now into our game world, we can add all three of these and see what they actually look like. So right within our on load in the world, we're going to add our obstacles here. And we can do this by adding the component. The first one we'll do is a obstacle trash. And with these, we also do need to add the position. So within here, we can call the position and then set the position equal to a vector which for this one, we can just set it to zero, zero for now. So this should appear in the center of the screen. And if we rerun that, you'll see we have our trash obstacle there. Similarly, we, we can add the other two, which will be the water and the fire. And we do want to change the positions of these. So we can change the X value here to be a negative obstacle size times two, and then also a positive obstacle size times two. So I just space them out a little bit. And if we rerun that, you'll see we do get our three obstacles showing up right on the screen there. So now that we have the obstacles, we actually want to make them move up the screen. And we can accomplish this with actually overriding the update. We're going to be looking at the objects on our world here, where the type is a type of obstacle. So we can use this where type and then pass in the type of obstacle. And since all of these are extending the obstacle class, they are all obstacle types. So this, this right here is only going to affect the obstacles. It's not going to affect the other components, which would be our bin and our player in this case. So we can look at all the obstacle types in our world right now, and we can change their Y position which would make them move up the screen. So for each element, which is actually an obstacle, we'll just change this for an easier understanding with what we write. But each element or obstacle's position of Y, we're going to subtract the time element here. So this is kind of the change in time. And we're gonna multiply this by essentially a speed factor. So for now, we'll give it a 400. The more you increase this, the faster the obstacles will move up the screen. So you can see they are moving directly up the screen and off the screen. And if we want them to kind of loop back around, we can actually also do that with checking if they are 
popping off the screen at the top, which would be that the obstacle's y position is less than our negative game ref size of our y, and we do need to divide this by 2. So basically, if it is more negative than our top of our game, then what we want to do here is actually change the obstacle's y position again, but we're going to set this equal to essentially what would be down below our game. So we could basically just give it the extended height divided by 2 again, and that will kind of bring it directly back down here. And you can see those obstacles are there, and as soon as they pop off the screen, they pop back on from underneath. Now this is good, but what we are going to do is extend this screen height. What we can do in our constants is create another variable here, which will be our extended height. And we're going to change this extended height to be our game height times four. And this will mean we can have four full screens of obstacles and then kind of loop it after that fourth one. You can play around with this, and if you don't want to loop the obstacles, then it doesn't really matter. You could kind of just have them be removed off the screen completely, but if you do want to loop them, it's nice to have at least more than one loop so you can have four versions of obstacles before you loop it. But since we have this extended height now, what we can do is just change this to be the extended height. And now if you save this, it's going to loop, but then it will appear like nothing is happening because we're getting kind of those three versions of the screen that have no obstacles on them. And then eventually we're going to get that obstacle that comes back up. This is good for now. In the next video, we're going to actually build out levels with these obstacles. Mm -hmm.